The story involves the ugly divorce between Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. If you didn't see this, it played out. We talked about it seemingly daily on these microphones that I'm talking into right now. So we are told that Aaron Rodgers attempted a power play, power play with the Cheeseheads, and the story was buried behind a paywall on The Athletic. Uh, Rodgers had deputized his agent, David Dunn, with a flamethrower, the old blowtorch there, requesting via the agent, who is a representative of the athlete, to talk to Mark Murphy. So David Dunn, the agent of Rogers, contacted Mark Murphy, the president of the Green Bay Packers, with a simple request. He said, you know what? That GM, Bryden Gutekunst, fire his ass. Uh, And uh, so this happened in early of 2021, if you believe the reporting, early of the 2021 offseason, Dunn, the agent, contacted Murphy and said, here's my mandate. I have a simple mandate. You either fire Gutenkunst or you trade Aaron Rodgers. Period. Stop. That was the flamethrower. In the end, at least right away in 2021 and also in 2022, the Packers president, Mark Murphy, said, go pound sand. No, 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 no. All right, so let us discuss. The question, what is your viewpoint on this report here about Aaron Rodgers making demands of people losing their job via his agent? So I've got my observations. You've got Marie Callender's bottom dealing and Aladdin. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make the Baba Ganoush, a cheesy version of the Baba Ganoush. So, number one, Aaron Rodgers pushing the boundaries. Now, it's like a child, right? Uh, you, 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 you little kid, you know, you, you did this when you were a kid. If you have kids, they do it. You, you're trying to see how far you can go. Doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, Aaron Rodgers believed that he had so much sway that because the Packers' front office was run by Bozo the Clown, that he could get rid of Bozo the Clown. Clearly frustrated with the methodical approach to the roster building, Aaron Rodgers was baffled that they did not improve the core. And so he raised holy hell via his agent. You mix that with an equal helping of the inflated ego, all of the trappings of being a celebrity athlete, and Rodgers was testing The limits considered himself on par with LeBron James. LeBron James, how many coaches have lost their jobs because of LeBron James over the years? There's a trail of bodies from all the coaches that have been whacked because LeBron didn't agree uh, or they they were the fall guy because the LeBron team uh, did not win. But in the NBA, if a big-name player wants the general manager or the coach fired, uh, here's how it happens. The player via his agent, contact his, uh, contacts the team president and says, you know, this guy's not that good. We should get rid of this guy. I'd feel more comfortable with somebody else. I think this guy should lose his job. And then the team president uh, says, okay, uh, hangs up the phone and uh, then uh, texts the GM or the coach and says, uh, your ass is grass. Go to the who's gal. Get out of here. Uh, see you later. Now, we have not gotten to that point yet in the NFL. Things are headed that direction. We haven't crossed the Rubicon fully yet. We've seen examples of that kind of activity. Denver, for example. Uh, They gave Russell Wilson a whole lot of power, and uh, then they went out and took a ride on the Vomit Comet in the Mile High City football-wise last year. But Aaron Rodgers ends up dining at Marie Callender's in in this story Instead of key lime pie or apple pie or strawberry pie, uh, Rogers had a big plate filled with humble pie. And a la mode, by the way, with a side of reality check, forced to sulk in Green Bay a little while longer. In fact, I guess two full years longer before he ultimately entered the transfer portal and got his wish and ended up with the Jets. But it didn't happen right away, and he had to spend two more years with the Packers. Now, second, who do you think just between me and you here, who do you think leaked the story of Aaron Rodgers issuing an ultimatum? 
So this is another one of my guilty pleasures. I love to play the parlor game when a story gets out, who leaked the story? And as a rule of thumb, we always start by asking two basic questions. Who stands to gain from the leak, and why would you leak now? Why would you leak now? And if you follow the breadcrumbs, or I guess in this case because we're talking about Wisconsin and the Packers, if you go to the dairy farm, it's all that cheese, a little piece of cheese there, the Limburger cheese. The, the Packers, they stand to benefit, don't they? Right? Isn't that obvious? Like Mark Murphy stood up against Aaron Rodgers for two years, pushed back, and all Rodgers got was vapors uh, when, he, when he asked for change. He said, no, no, you're getting nothing. Uh, and Rodgers shot for the moon and got nothing. Uh, and so the Packers essentially said to, to Rodgers, how do you like them apples? And then after, only after Aaron Rodgers had a down year, which he did in 2022, he was not up to his standard, at that point they got rid of him because he was showing signs of falling apart. So as far as the why now, on the face of it, my theory is because Rodgers is being smothered, smothered with love from the New York media and the Jets, and he's no longer a Packer problem. So you go out, you hang the clothesline right in the front of the team facility on Lombardi Drive, I believe it's called. I was there a couple years ago. And you air the dirty laundry. What does Aaron Rodgers have to say about all this? Well, he was asked. He was asked about the bottom dealing. And when he was questioned about this, about the demand for the GM, Brian Gutenkutz, to be fired, Aaron Rodgers, what did he do? Did he say, yes, absolutely, I did it. And I would do it again. B, no comment. Or C, he put up his deflector shield. The answer, C. Uh, Rogers deflected the question to his agent. So then the athletic contacted Aaron Rodgers' agent. Do you think the agent then confirmed the story? B, had no comment. Or C, didn't answer their phone. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, it's C again. Did not answer the phone. So, sleight of hand. Using the plausible deniability. Using that card from the bottom of the deck. Now, final point. Should should the New York Jets GM, the new sheriff in town, as Rodgers has relocated to the I-95 corridor, should the GM, Joe Douglas, there be looking over his shoulder with Aaron Rodgers? So I am nodding my head, yes. This is a Faustian bargain, is what it is. Now, the Johnson & Johnson ownership group, you take the temperature in the room there, and the Johnson & Johnson ownership group, they are willing to sacrifice just about anything at this point. They have tried almost everything, and they have mostly put dog food teams on the field. So they, they want to satisfy that limitless desire to actually have a good team, a legitimately good team on the field again. It hasn't happened in a long time. And they've reached a lot of low-water marks, a lot of low-water marks uh, over the years. And so they've given Aaron Rodgers a very warm welcome. But Rodgers has already shown his colors. If he's already done this, why would he not do it again? He forced his way out, took a couple years, forced his way out of Green Bay. He was at loggerheads with the front office. He wanted a team that was more aggressive in free agency and all that. He also wanted to be the one that was the boss. Who's the boss? He wanted to wear the pants. And he found he found that with Gangry. Now in New York, Joe Douglas, the GM there with the Jets, he's got to pacify Rodgers. We've already seen it. That the GM is the genie from Aladdin. Your wish is my command. The Jets have added just about every ex-Packer they can get their hands on. Alan Lazard, a middling wide receiver. Let's overpay Alan Lazard. Check. Tim Boyle, backup quarterback. He blows, but he played with Rodgers, and Rodgers likes him. We'll use our credit card. We'll bring him in. Some tackle named Billy Turner. We don't even know who that is. But he played with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. And the biggest example of how Aaron Rodgers is running the show, Randall Cobb. Washed up three years ago, 
should be selling insurance somewhere, and he'll be playing wide receiver for the Jets. I'm not surprised. Nathaniel Hackett. Now, you can't blame Aaron Rodgers for Nathaniel Hackett because he was hired to woo. Woo! Woo! Uh, He was hired to woo Aaron Rodgers. We know that Hackett's a dingleberry, and now he's the offensive coordinator. Uh, Good luck on that. Those guys are a match made in heaven. And anybody that played with Rodgers, who Rodgers got along with in Wisconsin, is a made man. It's all part of the band of brothers. And Rodgers, he wants to get that train back on the tracks. Choo-choo! Wants to bring everybody back. Even if they can't play anymore. Bring them back. What can go wrong? Nothing will go wrong. Just bring everybody back. 